It's five o'clock in the morning and the two little girls, Dazzle and Emma woke me up and we're in that process of potty training. So Emma was very clear with me this morning. It's time, it's time, I need to get up, I need to get up. I brought her in and those of you who've been watching for a little while, my Emma series here, you know that I have had a concern about what it's going to be like to potty train Emma. But Emma came right in. She went into the potty pad area here and then she went into the shower and she started doing those circles that I showed you in a previous video. And then voila, she pooped right in the same spot that those of you who watched before, you'll remember this is the first place that Emma did her poop business here in my home. And so she's doing what most dogs do, and that is she's going back to the same place again to poop. Now, again, if you've been watching my channel for a while, I've set this whole area of my house up for my dogs. It is completely okay with me that they poop in this shower. In fact, I have designed uh, this type of system for my dogs to be able to do this. And so you see Liberty coming here to do her business as well, which is perfectly okay for me. Now what I've gotta do though is I've gotta get that cleaned up immediately. So let me Magic. do that. So that took me less than three seconds to clean that up, pop that in the toilet, and now we can either go back to bed, since it's so early and they woke me up, or we can figure out something else to do. I am highlighting this Again, for those of you who are potty training older dogs, dogs will go back to the area that they decide, that they decide, that they get conditioned into thinking is normal. So this is why I want my dogs that are basically indoor dogs to think this is the spot when they are in uh, this level of my home, this is where I want them coming to, to go potty. So regardless of whether they're in the living room playing with me or they're in my office with me, when they realize, oh, I need to go potty, I want them to be so conditioned to come back to this room. But we have to start here and then have them earn the right to have more space. So when we're potty training an older dog, we condition them to the area we want them to go in, and then we slowly give them more space that they have to prove that they've gotten it. But it's our job as the pack leader. It's my job as the pack leader to make sure that my dog understands where I want him or her to go potty. Now you might think it's crazy that I'm having dogs go indoors and you may want your dog 100% outdoors, which is fine, but you've got to do the work to condition them and to make certain that the dog understands your expectations and how best to fulfill that when they can't get you to communicate or listen to them. So it's uh, yesterday, Emma went to the back door. She stood there for, I don't know, a few seconds. I caught it and knew she's asking to go outside. This is great. Let me let her outside. But if I hadn't been there in that moment to see that, then I want her to be potty trained to a potty pad in front of that door as a backup. Love your questions. Love your comments. Please put them below. And, oh, there's something going on. Let me go see what it is. I suspect the other girls out there are saying, hey, we want to come in too. Something's going on. I'll go get the other girls. So we just added into the mix here, sweet tea. Hi, sweet tea. Sweet tea and Grace. And they were in my bed. And so while I do have an ottoman and I do have a... Um, step stool kind of thing that they can come down. They just prefer to be picked up. Normally, I would have this gate open 
so that they didn't necessarily all have to stay in here at the same time. So there's Miss Grace doing her pee business. And I'm sure we will see the other little girl doing the same. There you go. There she is doing her pee business. And so again, the reason I have the gate closed right now is just because of Emma and Dazzle being new and me wanting to get them very well conditioned. But now that everybody's done their business, I can open up this gate and then they have access up here to my whole master bedroom suite area and my office. Hello, I'm Sean Kantayashi with Saucon Valley Cute and Cuddly Toy Schnauzers. This is Emma and Devin is here today to work with me with the dogs. And what we're going to do right now is show you some time where Devin, Emma, and Dazzle are cuddling a little bit together in our attempt to help Devin build a good trusting relationship with them. Hi, Dazzle. Hi, yes. Yes, Dazzle. Such a good girl. Yes, Dazzle. Emma. Emma's scratching her ear again, and what I'm realizing is I didn't clean out her ears yet today, so I need to do that. This is nice to see Dazzle is wanting to interact with Devin. And here's Emma coming over to check things out. Now this is great because I'm gonna take that as a sign that Emma is asking to go outside and I'm going to open the door. Emma, do you wanna go outside? Emma, wanna go outside? Yes, yes, that's great. You're telling me maybe you need to go potty? Is that what you're telling me? That would be just fine. Yeah. I'll stay out here with her for a few minutes and see if that was what she was trying to communicate to me. I think it's so important with our dogs when they cue us with what we would want the cue to be. Like if she goes over to that door and stands at that door, I want the cue to be, hey, I'm asking to go out. And so I'm going to respond to that and allow her to come out and do her business. Emma's behavior when we were outside told me she wanted a little privacy. So now I think she's done what she needed to do and she's come back to the door. So letting her in. This would be very exciting if she was catching on to the body training. See how she still's cowering? Again, she's met Devin several times now, but these are just signs of her We'll call it shyness. It's signs of her lack of confidence, her insecurity sometimes. There will be a point, I don't know how long it's going to take me, but there will be a point where you're not seeing that kind of behavior from her, where you're seeing her happy, wagging her tail, greeting people the way Dazzle does. watching the show. Well, this is very good. They will build a great relationship with Devin over time. We don't expect it to happen in the first, second, or even third meeting. And as the pack leader here, as the leader of my dogs, it is my responsibility to make sure that I am setting my dogs up for success and that I am helping them to build really great relationships. So this is all part of it, and I hope that I am inspiring you to want to be a really great pet parent also and showing you exactly how to do it. Thank you, Devin. Stay. Devin and Liberty are in their obedience routine for the day today. And in this video, I intend to show you the range of what all my dogs do every day, multiple times a day sometimes. We try to stimulate them mentally because when you stimulate a dog mentally, they are much less likely to cause problems. And so all this mental stimulation that they're getting makes them really wonderful pets who like to sit in your lap and 
um, who are happy to just love and adore you because you've been the leader for them. When I talk about being the leader for your dog, I'm talking about creating structures like a playpen where the dog has clear space to do things. It's the structures that enable your dog to understand the boundaries, but it's also communication. It's very clear communication. It's consistent communication with your dog. And so things like learning stay, as you see Liberty doing here, and learning come, uh, these are more complex skills that we teach a little bit uh, later on in our process, but these are vital for dogs to be really good family pets. So if a dog doesn't know how to come, if a dog doesn't love its name, this is a red flag waving that something is off in the training process. It's, it's relatively easy to teach a dog sit down and spin, but we have a playlist where we show you step by step how to teach a dog some of the more complex things like stay and come and walking effectively on a leash. And if, if for some reason you think that training a dog is just about teaching them sit and down, I hope that I am helping to evolve your thinking that it is more than that to create a wonderful family pet. Liberty has such respect for us because of the communication, because of the way she's been taught. And building this bond with your dog, building this bond of trust and respect with your dog is something that's very, very important. And I hope that I'm inspiring you to want to do this for your own dog, regardless of your dog's age. So if your dog is older, you can still teach these things. You just need to do it step by step and you need to be consistent every day in your actions with your dog. Emma and I have done such a good job of bonding and she will do so many things for me now, including coming when she hears me call her name. But this is part of the reason why it's so important for me to have other people work with my dogs too using my techniques because she could very easily just bond with me and then only work for me. But I need her to work for everybody, anybody that she comes in contact with. So here you see Devin is uh, beginning a session with her and Emma has been watching the other dogs in their session here through the gate. You can see the dogs watching. Emma is learning the luring process, and frankly, she was doing really well with the luring process in the past few yes. days. Yes. So let's see how she's doing today. Yes. This is Devin is rotating between the kibble Touch. and the yes. high-value cheese. Yes. Touch. Yes. We like to rotate what we're doing to keep her attention. As she gets a little bit more familiar with this, as she gets a little bit better at this, we'll start to not give a treat every time. Yes, touch. Yes, touch, Emma. So when we're teaching a new command, we do the command at least five times in a row to help the yes, dog touch. get comfortable yes. and confident. Part of our teaching philosophy is helping the dog build confidence so that the dog gets to the point where they're saying, oh, I know how to do this, I like this, this is fun, yes, I'm getting it. We wanna see that tail wagging too as they are in their training sessions and learning. This is what's going to help build her sense of security and safety. We also love to have a dog learn to value their own name, to love hearing their name. And so this idea of using her name regularly and giving her a little treat when she hears her name. And you're also going to notice here at some point, Devin is going to reach for her collar and touch her collar while at the same time giving her a treat. And this is teaching Emma to be comfortable with someone um, reaching for her collar, reaching for her and giving her a treat. Now, hundreds of times a day, I'm touching Emma. I'm um, yes. petting her. I'm yes. rubbing my uh, fingers between her toes and caressing her ears and rubbing her belly so that she's used to having my hands 
um, touching her so that she gets very, very comfortable with that. So that's a, a, just a part of the day every day. But you can see Emma is coming along nicely with lure training. Yes, Ben, Emma. Yes, ben. Even though we've done this with her now several times, we would never have the expectation that she already knows the word yes, sit ben. or that she already yes, knows ben. the word down. One of the mistakes that I see people making when they are beginning training is they, they think that they've done two sessions with the dog and so now they just start screaming the word sit and they get louder when the dog doesn't sit. That's not actually teaching your dog anything. That's just yelling a word at your dog. But in our process, what we're doing is we're having her do the action, having her do the sit, having her do the spin, and then saying yes spin while she's doing it. So that eventually, eventually, months from now, we can get to the point where we might say the word spin and she automatically spins. But we're not expecting that in our third or fifth training session. I have my trusty water bottle here, and I use this water bottle if someone starts barking or making noise, and I have a boy here who's visiting. Some of you know him as Hershey. Some of you also may know that he has now been named Biscotti, but he has been making lots of noise here. So his mama has not taught him quiet yet. And so I have been working on that with him. And the way that looks is when he makes noise, I squirt him with the water bottle. And then when he is quiet, I say, yes, quiet. Yes, quiet, Biscotti. Good boy. Good quiet. Yes, quiet. So the idea, again, of rewarding the dog for the action, the behavior that they're in in the moment is what I'm wanting to point out to you here in this. So those of you who regularly ask me about how do you get a dog to be quiet, that is really a leadership issue, meaning you need to lead your dog to recognize and understand that you don't need the dog alerting you or whining at you to get your attention. You lead the way by teaching the dog what quiet is, and if the dog is not being quiet, do something to distract them, such as the water bottle, to get them quiet, and then say, yes, quiet. Yes, quiet, Biscotti. Good boy. Yes. So we're doing belly rubs over here for Emma, which is our release and you can see when we're teaching a little puppy like this, a five month old puppy, it's very important that we make it fun and that we end on a really good note. So she says, oh, I like this. This is getting better every time. Isn't it, Emma? Yes, yes, good girl, Emma. All right, Dazzle's up next. Yes, up, Dazzle, good job, good job. You may recall that Dazzle was not food motivated and so we have the cheese but Devin also smartly said hey I'll bring a toy too to see if that makes a difference now Dazzle is of course coming right over to me which is very common because I'm the one who spends the most time with Dazzle and I'm the one who spends the most time with all the dogs actually So when Dazzle gets anxious, the ears go back. Do you see how her ears are going back like that? Again, trying to teach you how to read a dog. So she's feeling anxious right now. So Devin is doing the right thing and just sitting next to her. And I, I think I've shared with you all in a prior video that I believe, I know, Dazzle was in an environment where she was not allowed to take food out of someone's hand. So just teaching her to be willing to take food out of a hand is going to be 
one of the first things that we have to deal with here. Now this session, frankly, would be going better if I weren't in the room. So oftentimes Devin works with my dogs when I'm not around, but of course the purpose of the video is for you to see how this is going and what to do if you encounter some of these training challenges yourself. So some of it is helping Dazzle to build a relationship with Devin. And that little step right there was very nice to see Dazzle coming towards Devin. I will tell you that when I am here home alone with all the dogs, Dazzle is glued to me right by my side, which is also an indication that it is very important that I make sure she has 15, 20 minutes a day where she's alone, where I make sure she's in little groups with other dogs where I'm not around because I don't want her to only bond with me. Now, this is really important because those of you who have dogs and you said, oh, I wanna get a puppy, I wanna, I want a little puppy that's going to be my best friend and I'm going to spend lots of time with my little doggy and, and raise my little doggy to be my baby. That's wonderful, there's no problem with that, but I want you to raise a, a, a secure, confident little baby not an insecure, anxious one. And that's all about how we interact with them. It's all about the leadership that we offer our dogs. So the cue that I'm seeing here is I've got to make sure that I don't um, allow Dazzle to just get so bonded to me that she doesn't want a relationship with anybody else. I will tell you that Dazzle is also bonding very nicely to my husband, Jim. And when he comes in, she gets excited to see him. Yes. How about if you pick her up and put her on the training bed? I'll stand behind you and we'll see if that helps at all yes. with just getting her to focus even a little bit on you. If we could get her to focus a little on you, that'd be great. Yes. Yes, Dazzle is in a huge transition, just like any dog that goes from living in one environment to a completely different one, and as dramatically as Dazzle's change was. See, this is interesting. Dazzle will eat when it's been put on the place's bed for her, but she's not eating out of hand. So again, this is the challenge right now that we are experiencing with Dazzle. We may have to find a food that is just so phenomenal. Let me go upstairs and get a little bit of ground beef and see if that makes a difference. So I've gotten some hamburger and Devin and I are changing positions, but I wanna be really clear about something. Devin is completely capable of everything that I am about to do. The reason why I have changed positions with Devin is because this dog has bonded extremely well to me and at this moment, she is only wanting to interact with me. Now, I mentioned just a few minutes ago that I recognize I need to do something about that, but for teaching lure training and for getting this started with her, I'm willing to do this. Eventually, she's going to have to work for Devin and others. This is lure training right here. She likes the hamburger meat and she's following my hand. Yes, sit, Dazzle. Yes, sit. And this is one of the first times I've seen her eat out of a hand. So we found what she likes. She likes hamburger. Yes, sit, Dazzle. Yes, sit. Luring, luring her up, then luring her into a sit. Yes, sit, Dazzle. Yes, sit. Yes, yes, Dazzle. So I'm just saying yes as she's following my hand. Yes, Dazzle. Yes, sit, Dazzle. I want her to love her name, so I'm saying her name a lot. Yes, sit, Dazzle. Yes. When I give her the treat, notice how I'm doing the timing on this. The timing on this is very important. So I'm having her follow my hand. Yes. Yes. 
I put the, my, my hand is right above her nose so that she sits. Yes, sit. As soon as she sits. Yes, sit, Dazzle. Whoops. Say, that was a big piece that I just dropped. Dazzle. Yes, Dazzle. Yes. We found what she likes, and now we will start to use this regularly. Yes, Dazzle. Grass-fed ground beef for you, girlfriend. Yes, Dazzle. Yes. Lure. There's the signal, the sign for sit. Yes, sit, Dazzle. Yes, sit. And we're going to do this a hundred times with her, not all at once, not today, but over and over and over before we ever start randomly saying, yes, sit. So before we ever just start saying sit, sit, sit to her, uh, we're teaching her what sit means. So yes, sit. Yes, sit, Dazzle. So glad we found the food. This is, again, one of those where you have to experiment to figure it out. Yes, spin, Dazzle. Yes, spin. Now, Devin is also the one who taught me, hey, you've got to do it in multiple directions so that it's not just one way. So, yes. Yes, sit, Dazzle. Yes, Dazzle. Good job. Good job. Yes. Yes. Yes, Dazzle. Yes. I'm letting her lick on it, but I'm not letting her actually take it until we get all the way around with the spin. Yes, spin. Yes. All right. Dazzle. Yes, sit. Now I'm going to try to lure her into... And if I can't do it the first time, uh, I'm happy to just push just a little. Yes, down. Yes, down. Key to that, though, is to the second her belly hits the bed. So always, always start a down from a sit. So yes, down. Yes, down, Dazzle. Yes, down. Yes, down, Dazzle. Good girl. Yes. Yes, sit, Dazzle. Yes, sit. So I'm letting her lick on it as we go into. Yes, down. Yes, down, Dazzle. Yes, down. Yes, down, Dazzle. What we're doing right now is very, very basic. But it's so important that you follow these steps exactly. The three parts to the command. Three parts to the command. Lure the dog into the position. Say, yes, sit. And then give the treat. All within seconds of each other. Yes, sit. Yes, sit, Dazzle. Yes, yes. Yes, sit, Dazzle. Go back to the sit, and now we're going to try to lure into a down. All right, let's go this way. Yes, down. Yes, down, Dazzle. Yes, down. Yes, down. Now, belly rubs. Belly rubs for Dazzle. Belly rubs for Dazzle. Yes. Yes. I'm going to grab her collar, and at the same time I'm holding onto her collar, I'm going to give her the jackpot. Yes, Dazzle. So I'm holding on to the collar, I'm petting her neck, I'm giving her the jackpot, I'm making her name great. Yes, Dazzle! Good girl! Good girl, Dazzle! Excellent! Well done! So, again, Devin could have done all of that if Dazzle wasn't so attached to me. So part of what I have to work through is helping Dazzle to understand that that same bonding, that same trusting experience that she's feeling with me, she can also feel towards other people. So we will be working on that. I will be working on that with her uh, between our videos. 
And I will also be working with her using, now that we understand that she likes hamburger meat, I will start to use that until she gets good at this and then we'll switch her back over to kibble. So if you're getting value out of these videos, please hit the subscribe button, give it a thumbs up, and I look forward to seeing you in our next video.